Chapter 1. Positive Psychology Covers the Scientific Study of What Makes Life Worth Living. Generally, psychology is associated with the dark side of life, addictions, anxieties, phobias, etc. But the converse is also true. The psychology that looks at the bright side of life is called positive psychology. What makes life worth living? How can we pursue a good life? There is a growing interest in what positive psychologists have discovered about the good life. A combination of research findings and their practical implications provide answers to how we might pursue an extraordinary psychological life. Happiness is not ingrained in our genes. We can all learn things to do to lead happier lives. Pursuing a good life is a collection of 100 reflections of Christopher Peterson, a psychology professor at the University of Michigan. In this book, the reflections have been organized under broad categories representing positive psychology concerns. The first section, Positive Psychology and the Good Life, contains positive psychology examinations as a scientific perspective on the human condition. Subsequent sections address different contributors to the good life, positive emotions and experiences, positive traits and talents, positive relationships, and institutions such as families, workplaces, schools, sports, and geographical places. A discussion on things that make life not worth living is in the penultimate section. In contrast, the final section contains reflections on positive psychology's relevance to pursuing an extraordinary psychological life. As for the good, it exists in the irreducible multiplicity of good deeds and in the good inclinations to which tradition has given the name virtues, which is to say, excellences. André Comte Sponville, Chapter 2 Positive psychology complements the problem-focused psychology that has been dominant for many decades. Several truisms underpin positive psychology. What is right in life is as genuine as what is wrong. What is useful in life is not merely the absence of problems. The good life requires its explanation, not only a theory of disorder. Science requires checking theories against evidence. Psychology is science, and positive psychology is psychology. It is not the same as self-help programs that have been scientifically proven or affirmations with no real foundation, and it is not the same as the power of positive thinking. It is not a sequel to the book The Secret. The science of positive psychology has been impressive, as recent findings of the proper psychological life reveal that most people are happy. Happiness is a cause rather than a consequence of good things in life. Most people are resilient because happiness, character strengths, and good social relationships provide the buffers we need against the damaging effects of disappointments and setbacks. The contribution of money to well-being diminishes daily, but money can buy happiness if spent on other people. To achieve a satisfying life, you must replace pleasure with happiness. Schools should teach unconditional caring as well as critical thinking. Good days are days when we feel autonomous, competent, and connected to others. You can lead a good life. Sustained happiness requires commitment. There are no shortcuts. The chapters that follow explore the research findings of the proper psychological life, the most promising practical implications based on these findings, and use positive psychology to make sense of the world in which we live. Chapter 3. A full life comprises good work, love, play, and service. Our leisure activities say a lot about our level of satisfaction in life. Play teaches lessons that make possible the laborious tasks of work and love. Work, love, and play provide another useful way to organize positive psychology concerns. However, it is not a psychological process that makes life worth living. It is work, love, play, and service to others. While we may be tempted to include service with love, careful examination of both terms 
reveals the difference between them. Love is one-to-one, referring to relationships with specific others, spouses, children, colleagues, and neighbors, whereas service is more general, referring to connections with larger groups or purposes. We may not even know those we serve, but doing what we can to improve their lot makes our own life worth living. If positive psychologists aspire to study what makes life worth living, they should know what life entails. Time-use studies give a glimpse of people's day. Time-use researchers contact respondents at the end of a day for a detailed account of what they did during that day and how much time each activity took. In 2009, a study of a nationally representative sample of U.S. adults found that the significant time-use categories fit precisely the formulation of work, love, play, and service as the domains in which the well-lived life occurs. Sleeping and eating are more enjoyable categories when done with someone else and thus contained in the love category. Chapter 4 The components of a full life must have clear definitions and cater to outliers. If someone participates in work, love, play, and service, they have a full life, but we see an empty life if someone engages in none. However, not everyone who participates in these activities can boast of a good life. Thus, it is essential to zero in on the full life by adding to these four elements some qualifications that move an activity from the typical to the notable and include how well the action is done. Consequently, psychology, the study of human behavior, needs to study people's actual actions rather than the things that interest the researchers. Subfields of psychology have been preoccupied with perception, memory, judgment, emotion, social influence, and the like. Attention needs to turn to helping, hurting, playing, working, talking, eating, risking, waiting, flirting, wasting time, showing off, giving up, screwing up, compromising, selling, persevering, etc. These actions constitute the actual behavior of people. The research findings from positive psychology or any scientific endeavor should not be taken as absolute truths because there are always exceptions. But exceptions do not mean the rule is wrong or that the exception is to blame for the undesirable outcome. The fact that someone follows health rules and still has poor health does not mean rules of healthy living are wrong or that disobeying these rules is the way to a long life. Chapter 5 Part of the good life is to experience pleasure, happiness, satisfaction, and engagement. What do we know about the different forms of positive emotions? Are there ways to enhance or prolong our satisfaction? Positive psychologists Fred Bryant and Joseph Veroff researched savoring. They found that we can best savor a pleasurable experience by throwing ourselves into it without distractions. While taking a shower, for example, do you allow yourself to be in the moment or do you get distracted by some other activities you already performed or plan to accomplish after leaving the shower? Savoring contributes to well-being at the moment and after that, all you need to do is avoid distractions from life's little pleasures. There are different strategies you can apply to attain a good life. They include sharing positive experiences, building memories by taking photographs or sharing souvenirs, and immersing oneself in the experience. How much savoring each person does affects their life satisfaction and happiness. Some people even show dampening, which is the act of dealing with a positive feeling by trying to feel worse. Many people dampen for several reasons. For example, some don't want to show off to others or do not want to get their hopes up for the future. University of Waterloo researchers also found a correlation between somebody's self-esteem and their tendency to savor or dampen a positive feeling. Those with higher self-esteem see happiness as a state consistent with who they are and thus savor good feelings. Those with lower self-esteem dampen their good feelings. 
This research's implication is that consistency is a more potent influence on emotions than hedonism. In other words, skills are not enough to make people happy. They need to have reasons to be satisfied, which makes the task of the implied positive psychologist more daunting. Multiple studies have also revealed that wealthy people take less pleasure in the small things in life. Their happiness is usually lessened unless they always spend top dollar. Thus, their quest for a good life will be ongoing and ultimately frustrating. The rich may not enjoy their time here on Earth unless their wealth is salient to them. Did you know? Experiments show that fast foods, which supposedly help us save time in one domain of life, lead us to be impatient in other realms of life. Chapter 6 Beyond feelings and happiness, traits and talents are more enduring characteristics that must be encouraged to make a good life possible. Randy Pausch was a Carnegie Mellon science professor who succumbed to cancer at age 47 on July 25, 2008. His work, The Last Lecture, is all over the internet. To say that he was a great teacher would be an understatement. Despite his failing health, his last lecture revealed multiple routes to happiness and fulfillment through pleasure, engagement, and meaning. Pausch scored a hat trick. He was funny, loved his work, and contributed mightily to the larger world. Other people mattered to him and he to them. There are no character types except, in theory, just people who have more versus less of a given strength. The media celebrate bad boys and mean girls, but people should avoid them like the plague. In the real world, there is no categorical view of character strengths. It is instead safer to support a dimensional perspective. That means that even the best of us are not wise, but wiser. Not kind, but kinder. Not brave, but braver. These traits are usually measured concerning a reference group. Where we live also contributes to where our strengths lie. In a research conducted by Christopher Peterson and Nansuk Park on psychological differences among residents of cities across the United States, they studied character strengths among over 47,000 residents in the 50 largest U.S. cities between 2002 and 2005. These findings showed strengths of the head and strengths of the heart among the respondents. Cities with head strengths like San Francisco and Seattle showed openness to change, had more educational institutions, and a higher number of stories of individual achievement. Heart cities like El Paso and Omaha had more children, a warmer climate, and are more conservative. Their focus is more on relationships than achievements. Chapter 7 Other people are essential to us and we are to them in the pursuit of the good life. Positive psychology research summarizes the good life in a bumper sticker slogan that says, Other people matter. In the company of other people, we often experience pleasure and indeed how we best savor its aftermath. Through character strengths that connect us to others, like gratitude, many of us find satisfaction and meaning in life. It is with other people that we work, love, and play. Good relationships with other people may be necessary for our happiness, even in markedly individualist cultures like the contemporary United States. Gratitude is a way to let other people know that they matter by forging an emotional bond between people, but not everyone expresses gratitude verbally and clearly. Gratitude strengthens the heart, so we must pay attention to appreciation, considering how precious it is. A study showed 700 middle school students who completed a self-report measure of gratitude at one point in time and measured life satisfaction and social integration at subsequent points in time. The results were clear. Consistent with previous research, gratitude led to subsequent life satisfaction and one of the affected pathways was increased social integration. So, gratitude indeed bonds us to others and other people matter, but few of them are mind readers, so let them know that they matter. They might benefit. You certainly will. 
Friendships that revolve around people are companies that research shows to be healthy, lasting, and satisfying. Gender also plays a role. Journalist Jeffrey Zaslow wrote a column that culminated in a book on women's relationships. The book's theme is that women are different from men concerning their companies. For example, women's friendships revolve around one another, whereas men's friendships revolve around shared activities. Chapter 8. Families, workplaces, schools, sports, and geographical places are institutions that are capable of enabling the good life. Positive psychology can enhance a good life if its scientific findings are applied to our daily lives. These research findings indicate that positive emotions and experiences like savoring our shower time can contribute to overall happiness and satisfaction in life. They also reveal that good character development, showing resilience, and realistic optimism can help us lead a fulfilling life. It has also been established that the types of relationships we build with other people contribute to our happiness levels. Happiness has been shown to depend more on our choices than on our genes, thus disproving the set-point theory that claims each person has a fixed level of satisfaction. Towering over these discoveries is the subtle yet essential fact that the good life requires enabling the institutions of families, workplaces, schools, sports centers, and certain geographical places to thrive. For instance, as far as parenting is concerned, carefully done studies show that fathers positively influence their children throughout life. However, the degrees of positive influence differ depending on the child's age, whether they are a boy or a girl, and how actively involved good fathers are in their children's lives. Active involvement is defined in terms of engagement, accessibility, and responsibility. Actively involved fathers have close and affectionate relationships with their children, spend time with their children, talk to them about things that matter, and are the kind of person their children want to be as adults. In general, actively involved fathers provide their daughters and sons with a lifelong example of what it means to be a good man, a good husband, a good parent, and a righteous person. These lessons help children to make wiser choices. Conclusion in life, luck can matter only if one takes advantage of it. You may not be exceptional at anything, but there is one thing you must be extremely good at, being yourself. That way, when opportunities present themselves, you'd be primed to seize the day and make the most of it. You can win if you try. The best activities are those that are intrinsically rewarding. When we identify things we are passionate about and do them, the result will be a good life. We may not become affluent by doing these things, but multiple studies in positive psychology have shown that money and happiness seem to have an inverse relationship. Do what you do in situations where doing well has the biggest payoff. Strive to always create an environment that allows you to thrive and make the most of what life serves you. The value of anything is contingent and contextualized. What are you doing? Where are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Be purposeful and pragmatic with the activities you engage yourself in. Make sure you act in ways that are consistent with your values and beliefs. Do not be afraid of change. Be willing to start over when you realize that the plate life serves you is not what you want. Savor the mundane things of life like eating a bar of chocolate, taking a shower, going for a run, etc. Leading a simple life affords you a number of possibilities. Be friendly, be flexible, be open-minded. Whatever you do, commit to it completely. Do nothing half-heartedly. Flow is produced only if you immerse yourself fully, deeply, and sincerely in an activity. Carefully consider the consequences of your actions before taking them. Compare these consequences with the satisfaction that comes from doing the thing now. One will surely trump the other, so go for it, because in the end, life is what you make of it. Finish strong. It is paradoxical that many educators distinguish between a time for learning and a time for play without seeing the vital connection between them. 
Leo Boscalia. Try this. The good life depends mainly on the environmental factors that either enable or disable it. Consider where you need to make changes that will of those around you.